Daniel chapter 5 is our chapter for the day, for the week, I should say. We uh, yesterday talked about how Belshazzar was throwing the drunken feast and uh, the goblets that he were, was using were from the house of God, a direct violation of, uh, of, of God's purpose for those objects. And really, the motive behind that was pride, uh, I'm in charge, I'm the one that deserves honor and glory and majesty and uh, in your face. It really was uh, a bold move uh, by Belshazzar. And remember, the Medo-Persian army is even now converging upon the city of Babylon. It just doesn't seem that Belshazzar is in the least bit worried about uh, judgment from above or an attack from without. He has a false sense of security. I think sometimes we believers uh, occupy that kind of Babylon in our own life. The Apostle Paul was careful to point out that sometimes we think that we stand and we need to take heed lest we fall. Remember what he said to the Corinthian believers? Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. So we, we sometimes put ourselves in the ego of our own Babylon and we don't think about the way that we're violating what we know to be that's right, uh, God, and we don't think about the pressures from without. And so lest we be too quick to judge a Belshazzar, I think sometimes we do the same thing. So Belshazzar sees the writing on the wall, literally, doesn't know what it means. Uh, we're going to find out what that writing is and what it means a little bit later. And he calls for all of the astrologers, the magicians, the soothsayers, and the people whose business it is to connect with the gods, to interpret these things. It seems as if Daniel is kind of in retirement. And Daniel's an old man. And Nebuchadnezzar has long since passed off the scene. And it just seems as if Dan Daniel has been forgotten. Now, oftentimes in the Bible, you'll see that God uses people at strategic seasons. And because we don't really see the elapsing of years in the Bible, sometimes we forget that there is lar there, there are large periods of time uh, that come between the episodes, the more famous episodes in people's lives. Uh, for instance, we don't think often of Joseph spending you know, those years, three years in prison. Uh, day after day after day. And then finally, that butler remembers the dream that Joseph interpreted. And finally, Pharaoh calls him. Sometimes in life, we, we don't think through, you know, Lord, what are you doing? It just seems as if uh, it's been years. I'm kind of on the shelf. Uh, and we ought never to think that way. You know, let's just stay faithful to the Lord and understand that God knows where we are. Let's keep a good spirit, a good heart, stay close to Him. And God knows when to use us for His purposes. We're finding that here even with Daniel. So the Bible says in verse number uh, 9, Then was King Belshazzar greatly troubled, and his countenance was changed in him, and his lords were astonished. Why? Because even the best of the best couldn't interpret the words of this message. And I think they all understood the, the ominous tone of the message. This can't be good. This is certainly something that was meant to be a communication from the other world. And it has their attention. Interestingly, just moments before, they're laughing and drinking and, and um, carousing and, and acting as if there's not a care in the world, and yet one communication from God, even a communication that, that's not understood yet, has caused them to have an entirely different attitude. Uh, such is the nature of God's Word. Now look at verse 10, uh, where the Bible says, Now the queen... Now the queen so who is the queen here? Probably not the wife of Belshazzar, uh, but probably the queen mother, which would make her the daughter of, 
if we look at the mother side of Belshazzar, would make her the daughter of Nebuchadnezzar. So remember, the nation had a fresh view of Jehovah God under Nebuchadnezzar after he had been humbled. Remember, Nebuchadnezzar lived for a good 13 years after he came back to his senses. And so the people of Babylon were introduced to God, introduced to the things of God. And no doubt the daughter of Nebuchadnezzar was greatly impacted by that. Now, this grandson is obviously living a different life and is forgotten, but the queen mother has something to say. So look at verse 10. Now the queen, by reason of the words of the king and his lords, came into the banquet house, and the queen spake and said, O king, live forever. That's a, just a, a way to respectfully address the king. Uh, let not thy thoughts trouble thee, nor let thy countenance be changed. Why? Well, here's what she says. There is a man in thy kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. And in the days of th thy father, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods, was found in him, whom the king, Nebuchadnezzar, thy father, the king. Now remember, father could mean ancestor. It doesn't necessarily mean your, your direct father, but could be your grandfather or even your great-grandfather. Uh, thy father, the king, I say, thy father made master of the magicians, astrologers, Chaldeans, and soothsayers. So what does the queen do? The queen says, um, there is somebody else. There is another person here that you have overlooked. It's an interesting thing because uh, the, the king had exhausted all of his resources, and yet there was something he didn't think of. Reminds me of the woman in Luke chapter 7 who had exhausted all of her resources to try to get her physical condition ameliorated. Uh, ameliorated. Uh, but uh, she was nothing better. And it, then she came to Jesus uh, and touched the hem of his garment. Uh, I think about Ahab who called the 400 false prophets to give him ad advice about going to Ramoth Gilead. And they all said, yes. Isn't there another prophet? Isn't there anybody else? Asked Jehoshaphat. Well, yeah, there is one more, Micaiah. And of course, he is the one that gave the right advice, the, the godly advice. So often in the Bible, you see God working through the minority and sometimes God even working through the one person that's willing to represent God. So the queen here says, uh, you know, son, king, Belshazzar, there is one man that has this special ability and he will tell you. I I'm confident in him. Look at verse uh, number uh, 11, uh, verse number 12 rather, where the Bible says, for as much as an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding, interpreting of dreams and showing of hard sentences and dissolving of doubts, I love that, dissolving of doubts. That's what the Word of God does, by the way. It melts our doubts. It dissolves our, uh, our, our fears and our uncertainties. The Bible says, uh, we're found in the same Daniel. So is that not interesting that when the queen mother introduces Daniel to Belshazzar, she introduces him as Daniel, which is his Hebrew name. That's respect. That's, a, that's paying homage to the God of Daniel because Daniel, the I-E-L suffix on Daniel refers to God, Daniel. So she, she calls him Daniel, whom the king named Belteshazzar. Very interesting. Now she could have just said, hey, here's this guy named Belteshazzar, but she didn't. She said, his name is Daniel. Now you might know him and your grandfather named him Belteshazzar, named after the false gods, but this is Daniel named after the true God. And by the way, the God, Belshazzar, whom you have been denigrating, the God whose artifacts you have been using in a wrong way, drinking from these goblets and, and disesteeming the, the artifacts of the temple of God. So there ought to have been a, a level of, uh, of conviction here as he's hearing this. 
Then the Bible says, the king called him Belteshazzar. Now let Daniel be called. He will show the interpretation. You know, the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, let another man's lips praise thee and not thine own, a stranger and not thine own lips. Daniel never was a self-promoter. Daniel never said, look at me and look at what I can do and I'm better than the rest. And uh, he wasn't a trash talker. He wasn't a people pleaser. He wasn't a ladder climber. He wasn't. And true servants of God never are. But I find it interesting that this queen, whose language is respectful, uh, is, she's not a believer. She's still talking about the gods and the spirit of the holy gods. She has a, a polytheistic view of, of deity, but she does know there's something different about Daniel. And she respects him, both in the way that she addresses his name and in the confidence that she has in his ability to interpret. I mean, she is rock solid confident. Belshazzar, just call him. Don't be afraid. I'm telling you ahead of time, don't even be troubled. He is going to answer this dilemma for you. You know, when a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. And there's just something about the testimony of a God-fearing person. Joseph had that. Joseph had that among the court of Pharaoh. Uh, Daniel had that among the court of Babylon and then of Persia. Mordecai had that among the court of Persia a little bit later on. And we see that throughout the Bible when people are filled with the Spirit of God, there is a courage, there is a humility, there is an aura about them that even unsaved people, unacquainted with the nature of the true God, can still recognize. It's, the, it's that ring of truth. It's that gospel glow. I wonder, you know, what kind of intangible influence do you have uh, for God? What kind of intangible influence do I have for God? That people would know, boy, if you want to know what the Word of God means, if you want to get insight as to trouble in your life or what God is trying to say, boy, you ought to talk to, I wonder, would my name ever fill in that blank? Would your name ever fill in that blank? Because Daniel was known as a person who was in touch with God, a person that understood God's word, had a person that could explain God's word to people that desperately needed to hear it. I wonder if that could be said of you. I wonder if that could be said of me. What a thought. Well, we're going to jump into uh, this section tomorrow and see what the interpretation was and uh, what Daniel said and just how it all unfolded. So I hope you'll come back, be a part of the Bible study tomorrow. Have a great day in the Lord.